2 o'clock, uh, 2 p.m. on Tuesday. Is this the Rom Kids Show? Hey, everyone, it's the Rom Kids Show. It's Kieran from our home. Uh, this week, we are talking about mummies, uh, about our brand new exhibit, Ancient Egypt, uh, Ancient Egyptian Mummies, which is really cool. We have a very special guest on today as well. Emily Mangad is here. She's a project manager at the ROM. She's so cool, and she helps make these giant exhibits happen, all right? So we're gonna have her on the show. She's an absolutely exceptional uh, person, and also the first guest whose uh, kid watches this show as well. So very cool, very exciting. Um, if you're just joining us, this is the ROM Kids Show, hosted by the Royal Ontario Museum. This is a show for children. We're gonna do some art today. We're actually gonna do a science experiment. We're gonna mummify an apple. We're gonna talk a little bit about the ancient Egyptian mummification process. Then we have our very special guest, Anne Leet, on. She can take your questions, too, about how museums work, how these crazy, wild, exceptional exhibits come to fruition. Um, and we're going to have a uh, Q&A with her conversation and interview in a bit. Uh, if you're joining us uh, new from last week, we had uh, Sebastian on, who's a curator of invertebrates at the Royal Ontario Museum. And we talked all about coral reefs. Uh, and that's up on YouTube right now, so you can watch us live on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday or Thursday, uh, the, the, the shot, the film, the show goes up to YouTube, and you can watch it there. We're excited to be hanging out with all of you folks. Um, very excited to have a great day. I think it is now time uh, to do the theme song portion of the event, and then we're going to get ready uh, to do the rest of our show. Welcome to the Rom Kids Show with me. We'll do some crafts and tell some stories. Let's talk about science, art, and history. Welcome to the Rom Kids Show, starring you and me. Yeah, that's the best theme I think I've done yet. That is the theme song portion of the event done. Let's move on over to the art table and get set up for what we need today. I got my iPad ready to do some gesturing in a bit. I got the group chat here as well. If you're one of our friendly local guests, uh, someone who hangs us with us uh, frequently, let us know. Uh, so today, we are gonna mummify an apple, all right? And uh, you know what, I'm gonna save that for a minute. What you need to mummify an apple is, of course, you need an apple, all right? You can save the rest of it. If you have like a really giant jar, you can mummify the whole thing. But we're just gonna mummify a piece today. Uh, then eat the rest later. It's delicious. We got this apple from apple picking like a few weeks ago. So that's fun. You're gonna need baking soda, all right? Lots and lots of baking soda. You're gonna need salt, lots and lots of salt. And uh, if you have it, Epsom salt, okay? Talk to your parents, talk to the adult in your house. They might have Epsom salt for a bath. See what they got, all right? Ask them very politely. Then you're gonna need a jar. Clearly we used this for an art project a while ago. Um, so you need a mason jar, a spoon, and then a measuring cup, all right? These are all things that you will need. And while you are getting all that stuff, let's talk very briefly about mummification. Hello, 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 everyone. Oh, Isaac and Sarah are here. It's nice to see you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. A big fan of that family. Um, also, we saw that Alice and George, fans of the show who watch on YouTube, were at the ROM this week. They had a lot of fun. That was great. And they went to the Mummy show too. They're a little bit young, so parts of it were, you know, they loved Winnie the Pooh, uh, but it was a lot of fun overall. Okay, mummification. So groups and cultures all over the world uh, throughout history have um, done mummification to sort of celebrate the life of people uh, in, in their lives, okay? And obviously the most famous ones um, are those who mummified in ancient Egypt. Um, and in ancient Egypt, that was like several thousand years ago, and they were really, really exceptional at it. Now, we have people who watch the show that are as young as like three to like adults as well, so I'm not gonna get too deep into the mummification process, but I think it's really important that like off the top we address that mummies are not a Scooby-Doo scary thing, okay? This is a really thoughtful, important process that in ancient Egyptian culture was a way of celebrating the lives um, of people in their community, okay? Whether you were royalty or whether you made bread, 
everyone, this was an important part of their society, okay? And so when we think about mummies, often we have like that Scooby-Doo cartoon narrative that they're scary and they're like trying to eat your brains or anything like that. That is not something that we're fans of on this show. Uh, mummies are an important part of celebrating one's culture, especially if you are from um, ancient Egypt, okay? Now, um, to do that, we wanna do this in a non-invasive and thoughtful way, so we're gonna mummify an apple. All right, now I mummified this apple on an earlier show in, I think, May. And you can see how far it shriveled up, all right? Look at that, that is sort of a mummified apple right there. It's been in this mix. Uh, it's uh, not quite natron that they use in ancient Egypt, but it's the closest mix that we can use uh, from the products you have at home, okay? Again, baking soda, Epsom salt, uh, normal salt as well. And you can see just how different these apples have become, all right? So this apple started at roughly this same size, and then we were able to put it in this mixture, and we were able to dry it out. It's still a little bit moist, all right? Uh, but it's come a long way. And you can also see that it hasn't doesn't have like mold or rot on it either. And that's just the power of this mummification process. Now, in ancient Egypt, they did this even one step further. So what they would do is um, after you passed away, what they would do is they would take out some of the organs uh, from your body uh, and then they would preserve them in things called canopic jars because you would need them for your afterlife later. Um, then they would dry you out with this sort of natron substance and then after you came out of the substance, which was about 70 days, is they would clean your skin again, they'd um, make sure that you look as close to the way you looked in real life as possible. They'd use resin from a tree all over your skin, again, to protect you from mold and uh, rot and those sorts of things. So it was a really thoughtful, delicate, and in ways beautiful process of taking care of a human life, okay? Especially for the afterlife. And so today we're gonna try and replicate that live on the show. Um, we're very excited uh, to have a very special guest today. I think we're right on time for this. Whoa! It's our good friend, Anne Lee Mangat. She's here today, project manager at the Royal Ontario Museum. Thank you so much for being here today. How are you? Good, how are you guys doing today? Uh, we're, we're very excited to have you on, that's for sure. Another special guest uh, in what will be several weeks of special guests. Um, now, uh, Emily, fan of the show, uh, we're fans of you, um, and so I want to get right to it, okay? Because I think you do a really interesting job, and I think a lot of people who visit the museum, they're used to like all the really cool exhibits, whether it's the dinosaur exhibit, ancient Egypt, Rome, Greece, the hands-on galleries, those are all things. Then we have scientists and historians and technicians that do all the cool science that ends up in those, in those exhibits. But what a lot of people don't know is that there's tons of other people that actually create those exhibits. And you sort of like, sort of lead that process. Can you talk to us about like how a museum exhibit like comes to be? That's awesome. Uh, one of the, I, I, I love how I sort of see it as like a, a box of a, like puzzle pieces, right? And each individual person does important work, but once you put all these pieces together, you get an amazing, amazing picture and in this place, an exhibit. That's right. All right, so before we keep going, because we have lots of questions for Anne Lee, I want to get everyone ready for how to make 
their uh, Natron mix. And Malik, thank you for, hold, hold on for just a second while we pull all this together. So what we need to make our uh, mummifying mix for our apple, okay, is we need one cup of baking soda. And so I'm gonna do that right here. I got my baking soda, I'm gonna pour it right in. Oh, you know what, I'm gonna do that in a second so we can continue our interview. So you need one cup of baking soda, you need half a cup of salt, all right, and you need half a cup of Epsom salt, all right? So one cup of baking soda, half a cup of salt, half a cup of Epsom salt. I'm gonna mix them uh, right here, right into our jar, but we're gonna continue with our interview uh, with Amleet, just moving right down to my question. Okay, so your latest work um, is uh, Ancient Egyptian Mummies, uh, now on display at the museum. Uh, the ROM is open Tuesdays, uh, Wednesdays through Sundays, and you can see this really cool exhibit. Very quickly, can you tell us something that you really love about this exhibit? That's really cool. I, I love how you like brought it back to this exhibit, reminds us about the life that we exist now, because even though thousands of years have gone by since a lot of the, the, the lives in the show that, that are telling the story have, have gone by, we're still really similar with these people, right? Okay, a question that I think a lot of people have, again, we've sort of pulled back uh, the blinds here a little bit that there's so many people that work at a museum, whether you're an artist or someone who writes the text for all of these things uh, or like a 3D designer of which like a lot of work like that was done on this show is like, how do we, how do we, how do we like bring a show into a museum and then like we also tour these shows too. How do we send shows like far and wide and around the world? That's cool. So again, so many people have to do this. And like, I remember when uh, we had the Blue Whale, which is another exhibit, um, and just all the complications that went into just getting the Blue Whale head into the exhibit downstairs. Uh, and so in our pre-interview, we had a question from like our household, uh, which again, is going off script. So I'm, so I'm sorry, Emily is the most organized person at the Royal Ontario Museum. So I'm taking a big risk here by going off script. But um, what is the biggest thing that like you brought into the museum? And then I feel like there's a fun story that goes with it. Also viewed on the morning that we know that it was no 
That brings, makes me wonder, so you do all these like really cool exhibits, whether it's, uh, I think you did It's Alive, uh, which was really fun. Uh, obviously, John Poor did tattoos because if you're in the older like demographic who watches this show, tattoos was like a big hit. Um, you sort of get like this peek into these shows in a way that maybe the rest of us don't because we see it once it's been put on display. But you get you get to be there like when these things come in the museum, and like do you get to be there when like that sort of I romanticize this, but like opening up the crate and being there for that moment. That's yeah. really special. <laughs> we actually had a moment like that during the Mummy uh, installation. Something that I didn't know about. There's a coffin that's um, on display close. And, you know, it's packed. You know, when you assemble it, you have to obviously separate the coffin, the case, and put the lid on. The inside of this lid is amazing. It's beautiful. The colors are so well preserved. And that was kind of a unique moment for the team that we got to see this beautiful artwork, which isn't on display. That's really special. I guess that makes sense because if you're exposed to light in any way, the images change. But if you're hidden away, you're sort of like seeing it for the first time since that crate was closed by someone thousands of years ago. Yeah, it was beautiful. That's a really special, unique moment. Um, okay, I do have a question about exhibits though. So sometimes uh, we make them here at the museum. Um, so obviously we have Blue Whale coming up next year, so it's like the part two of the Blue Whale we also made a few years ago. And then we also have the Mummies one, which is brought over from the British Museum. So in managing teams and things like that, what's the difference between an exhibit that we have to make in-house versus one that comes to us? That's true because like exhibits come from different parts of the world. They have different demographics or like populations that attend. So that's really interesting how there's still like some tailoring that has to be done. Exactly. Now, what I'm gonna do right now is I've mixed together. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Emily. No, 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 okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna mix together my natron substitute, which is uh, a scoop of baking soda, which I think I said one scoop. Yeah, one cup. One cup baking soda, half a cup of salt, half a cup of Epsom salt. So I've mixed that all up here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour it carefully into my jar halfway, then I'm gonna put my apple in, and then I'm gonna cover up the rest of it with my solution. Now, um, Amelie, this year was a little bit different when it comes to making an exhibit uh, and putting it on display. We had to do that during a pandemic, and so all of us have been impacted by the pandemic in some way. Uh, some of us more so than others, especially um, if COVID-19 has made it in, into our family or someone close to us, but it's impacted everyone. And it's specifically impacted sort of like how we do an exhibit. So can you talk to us about sort of the characteristics of an exhibit during a pandemic? Really hard. 
Richard, who then couldn't come for the installation. Um, so we did have their skills and expertise for installing it, but luckily we have that skill set up the wrong. So we worked closely with our friends at the British Museum. We did live video calls, kind of like this. We did a lot of video photography, and we still kind of felt like we installed the show together. But it was um, we really relied on our preparators and conservators and the registrars um, to take on that work and install the show with us. Thank you for all your work and getting this show and, and putting it on and obviously all your teamwork with everyone that you worked with because it's really a gorgeous exhibit. I had a chance to go in there last week and it was super cool. Um, last couple questions here. One that I really want to ask is in our pre-interview, you said something that really resonated with me um, and I really think it speaks to when you're a project manager, especially when you're a project manager like Anne Lee, there's a lot of leadership that's involved. And so the quote that I have here is, Project management is a balance of management and leadership. And you have to understand that these are two different things. And I was wondering if you could sort of, you know, parse that out a little bit. I think that's really an important thing that you brought up. And I think another thing too that we're learning about today is you're, you're saying things like business management. And these are things that like, if I'm on the toddler side of thing, I'm like, the only business I wanna know about is like what's going on with Paw Patrol. And like, I get that. Um, but what it also speaks to are the amount of different types of jobs that are in a museum and the way that leadership can be shown from all different sorts of levels. That can be a director at a museum. Or it could be the curatorial staff, it could be the scientists, it could be a visitor services representative at the front of house on the floor doing important work. Um, it could be a hands-on gallery facilitator that shows leadership uh, in talking to families. Or it could be someone like you, Am Lee, who's able to like put all these puzzle pieces together uh, and really make an experience special. Which makes, this brings me to my next point, is what is like the favorite project that you've worked on? Because you've worked with some really incredible people at the museum. true that was a lot of fun that weekend um, it was right before summer club so it was like a lot of work at one time for me uh, but nowhere near you and being able to make that really cool event because people got to go behind the scenes and see where like all the scientists were um, I'm wrapping up here sort of like our final question is how does someone if I'm a viewer uh, of this show I might think like maybe I want to be a curator uh, and work at the museum um, or maybe I want to be a teacher who works at a museum or a scientist. Um, there's all different sorts of ways that you can get into it, but another way, again, that you can show your expertise in leadership is through being a project manager at a museum. 
how would you suggest if I'm a kid, how do I explore that so I can be you when I grow up? Emily, I got to retweet a portion of what you just said there is be involved with the group work at school. That's such a special point that even at when we're in kindergarten or in grade one or two, middle school, high school, university, as much as sometimes group work can be the bane of our existence, it's also a great way to show leadership. And if we have good leadership in group work, maybe we'd like it a little bit more, you know? Um, so with that, I want to say thank you so much, but hold on very quickly because I want to say bye with you on the air. We mummified an apple today. This is what it's going to look like in a couple of uh, weeks. What I encourage you to do is take a photo of your apple before you bury it. Write some notes about it. Is it shiny? Is it white? Has it started to turn brown a little bit? You know, what's going on? What does the solution look like, all right? Take some notes and then every 10 days, take it out and uh, observe it and then compare it to your original notes. You can see here in our uh, mummified apple from several months ago, you might not be able to see it live, but we can see there's some discoloration in our uh, mix right here. And that's what it looks like when the mix takes the water out of the apple. And so right now, that's why it's gonna look just very, very, very brightly white when we first put it in. And on the show, we're gonna come back to this in a bit. We learned that we have a really cool new exhibit all about mummif uh, mummies at the ROM, how it can tell us stories about our life today that maybe though thousands of years have gone by, not everything has changed. We know that mummy mummification, uh, and specifically in ancient Egypt uh, for today's show, is a really thoughtful uh, and, and powerful process about preserving life for the afterlife and that it's not a scary thing at all. It's a way that was part of their culture and traditions, and it's important that we respect that and honor that for what it is, and not try and vilify mummies, okay? We also learned uh, that there are so many different staff that work at the ROM, and one of the really important ones was on our show today, Am Lee, a project manager, and, and, and the, big, the big takeaway, I think, again, that I want is help out your friends at school, take part in your group work, take uh, part in those leadership opportunities because that will help you out later on in life because then maybe you can help get a really giant silver car into the museum in the middle of winter and not scratch it at all. Uh, so that's that's the show. Amley, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Ron. Thanks. Rom Kids Show returns next Tuesday at 2. Our good friend Jeanette is here to talk about tree cookies and what the power of truth is and what the true meaning of truth is. We'll see you next week, 2 p.m., Tuesday at 2, the Rom Kids Show. Bye, everyone. Stay safe, wear a mask. We love you.